Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia and Sand. This, of course, is learn how to edit stuff. And today we're going to learn to edit like Lil Board. Is it Little Board? Little Board. Little or Lil? Anyways, if you're not familiar with Lil Board, his channel is linked in the video description below. But this one is going to be fun. You ask, you receive. That's how it works at learn how to edit stuff. And all I ask in return is just for your subscription, which is free. Click on that subscribe button. No harm. So I went ahead and made my own Lil Board edit so I can kind of dissect some of the things that he uses in his edits to make them great. And this is what I came up with. The stare needles that I plan in my thighs every single day before I go live. <laughs> but but Google's working on some new speed hacks. Have you? It's like this. Yeah. Right, you're bringing me there. Frankly, I'm, I'm intimidated. Have you ever had the face of Twitch on your podcast? No. No. <laughs> um, the money's on Twitch. Uh, no. Nope. And then it just went flat line for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I got that. I got that for sure. Anyways, there is a lot to unpack with this one, but before we jump in, I just want to preface this whole video with saying, I cannot teach you how to edit exactly like Lil Board. I cannot give you the creativity that is infused into his edits. What I can do is I can give you the tools and the knowledge and the fundamentals and kind of dissect everything that he's doing and show you how to do that so you can do it yourself, but I cannot teach you how to do this one for one. You're going to have to drum up some of your own creativity inside your brain to make this one happen. And now that that's out of the way, let's jump into the Lil Board editing to Lil Board. Little Lil Board editing tutorial. Okay, first and foremost, all Lil Board videos are taken completely out of context. There is no sequence of events that happen in his videos that are true to reality. So you're going to want to find a video or an interview online, bring it into Premiere and start looking for funny lines, goofy reactions, really anything to make something funny. You are famous. Did you know the moon's made out of metal? This part is going to be totally up to you, but for my edit specifically, I ended up with something that looks like this. The steroid needles that I plan in my thighs every single day before I go live. <laughs> but but Google's working on some new speed hacks. Have you? It's like this. Okay, pretty raw, nothing going on just yet. But the second most important thing in a low board video is the camera movements that he does. And I'm going to show you guys an insane hack so that you can make your own handheld camera presets at home right now with no money down. No money down? It's Anyway, check this out. Find a wall in your house and put some sort of high contrast tape on it, like painter's tape, for example, like I'm using here, and just film that tape mark in a variety of ways so you have some different options. Then bring that footage into Premiere. Click on one of your clips in your timeline and duplicate it by holding down Alt and clicking and dragging. Now take your tape footage and put it on top of the duplicate. Now take the two clips and nest them together. If you don't know your shortcut, you can always right click, then choose Nest. Now apply a warp stabilizer to your nested sequence and set it to no motion and position. When it's finished, double click into your nest, delete the tape clip, and now you have magically transferred the handheld motion from one clip to another. Now sharing is caring, and if you want, I've included a link in the video description for you to download my tape clips so you can bring them into your project and start experimenting with it right now. But this is a very useful tip, even outside of this meme tutorial, on how to make your own handheld camera presets quickly and efficiently, and they look really good. So as you go through and add all these amazing self-created handheld presets to your footage, I urge you to save them as custom presets that you can call up later. If you right click on the warp stabilizer effect on any of your nests, you can choose save preset. Name it something that makes sense. Then it will appear in your presets folder under the effects tab. Just make sure that you nest your clip before you apply the preset, otherwise it's not gonna work. But now that we have our camera movement, we can add some zooms in as well. Click on this new item button, then create a new adjustment layer. Now take that adjustment layer and put it over your nested sequence. Now in your effects tab, search for transform and drop that transform onto your adjustment layer. Set keyframes for your scale and position properties, then go over a few frames and scale and reposition your video to your liking. You can do this any number of ways, but this is basically how you do it. And last but not least, uncheck the Use Composition Shutter Angle button and crank it all the way up so you can get some nice motion blur on your zooms. Now you can do this as often as you'd like for your edit, but Little Board does this a lot. 
All right, our camera movements are looking pretty good. And the third most important thing for your little board edit video is isolating the subject in a scene and making them get hit by something or making them do something that they never did in the first place. And this is just a really clever and convenient way to use a freeze frame with using content aware fill to fill in the background, to animate it a little bit. Sounds confusing. It's not, let's jump in. First, find the exact frame that you want to hold on in Premiere, and then click this little camera button to save a screenshot. Next, open that screenshot in Photoshop and trace your subject with the pen tool. After you're done, right click on your background layer and choose layer from background and click OK. Then come over to the paths tab and control click on the square and your selection will now highlight. Now all you have to do is hit control J on your keyboard to duplicate your selection. Now control click on your duplicated selection to select it then click into your bottom layer and turn hiding on for your top layer. Now you're gonna see your original outline and we're going to use this to fill our background. With your background layer selected, hit Control, Alt, and R to bring up the refine edge selection and set the feathering to two pixels and the shift edge value to 100% and click OK. Now come right up here to edit, fill, and choose content aware fill and click okay. And magically your background has done a pretty good job at filling itself in. And you can always go in with the healing brush and paint in some of the areas that need a little bit of refining. Now you have a background layer and a subject layer that have separation. So you can go ahead and save them each as a PNG, then bring them into Premiere to animate them however you'd like. Now I understand that that was probably a lot of information to take in in a very short amount of time, but the Sparknotes version of all of this is he's just cleverly using freeze frames as animation tools in his videos. So you're just creating a freeze frame and using content aware fill to fill in the background so you can then animate that person in your videos. I know it sounds complicated. You might think it takes a long time, but the result looks really good. The last thing that I wanna to touch on in some more detail is the morph cut effect in Adobe Premiere. I'm honestly not sure if he even uses Adobe Premiere for his videos, but the morph cut is insanely useful for hiding jump cuts. If you have a jump cut in your scene, search your effects for morph cut, then apply it in between the two clips and pull the edge inwards to shorten the length to maybe two or four frames max. Premiere will now analyze the transition, then morph the two clips together so the transition doesn't look so harsh. The morph cut, in addition to the camera shake and the zoom over it, will hide almost everything completely, so you're able to seamlessly transition two cuts together without anyone noticing. Finally, go back in and add some sound design and sound effects. Look for places in your video where you can center things in the frame using a transform adjustment layer and keyframes, and apply some distortion effects like lens distortion, magnify, sphere eyes, or twirl to really meme up parts of your video. Now, unfortunately, there is no set method for making a meme video. It's kind of a combination of creatively what you have in your head versus the skill sets that you have in the editing application. What I'm here for is to teach you the skill set portion, and then you're going to have to marry that with your creative portion in order to create something meme worthy like Lil Board. Little, little board. I'm going to say little, little board. Oof. As always, in the video description below, you will find some links to follow me on social, some plugins and things that I highly recommend for you as editors, a little bored social media. I'll just go check the link in the video description below. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. I appreciate it very much. And while you're at it, hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I upload a video so you can be the first to learn. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. We are introducing a brand new end card format into this video. It's the first time I'm debuting it to the world. We're not doing my normal outro. People are going to freak out. Out. Don't comment on it. I don't even care. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.